Hi and welcome to another episode of the Getting Things Done podcast. My name is Morten Røvik and I'm here as always with my good friend and colleague Lars Rotskill Hendriksen. Privet Lars. Privet Morten. Good to see you as always and looking forward to recording another episode with you. We always start off the podcast by reiterating the purpose of the podcast, which is to help you learn GTD or become even better GTD. So as always, we hope that this episode supports you in that. If you're listening for the first time, if you're new to GTD or need a refresher, we recommend you go back and listen to episodes one through six of the podcast to get an introduction to the basics. This is episode number 70 of the podcast. And today's topic is to dive into some more of the listener questions that you guys are sending in. Um, but before we do that, I thought I just wanted to clarify because I've heard from several of you now out there that had connected the faces and the voices wrong. So you thought my voice was Morton's and, and the other way around. So today, for those of you watching, you can see that I'm now wearing the Danish national jersey. I'm Lars, I'm the Danish half of the podcast. Morten is the other guy. I'm the left half of the <laughs> podcast graphic. Morten is on the right. So just for those of you who were a bit confused on that, I just want to clarify that. Yeah. And I put on the national uh, uh, team, uh, soccer player, soccer player team um, shirt player. today. The official one is light blue. No, of course I'm joking. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know how they can confuse us, Lars. No, they should really be able to hear that I'm the guy from Denmark. <laughs> yeah, they should. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But good. Now, you know. now we have, you know, those of you can see us. And also this kind of this lower third, uh, we have names here. So that might be a good idea for you. So, but um, thank you, Lars. And uh, you, you are not finished, but I think we are going into what's happening uh, today is we are past the milestone. <laughs> That's why I was a little excited, uh, not because you were in the Swedish national <laughs> soccer team uh, shirt. Yeah, I'm now sorry. We're confusing everyone. <laughs> no, no. So, so, but we are three years. That's true. On May 29th, the podcast turned three years old. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. We congratulations for us, and uh, and for those of you who has been following us for some time, if you want to give us a. Um, uh, you know, a present for our three years uh, and encourage us to continue. Uh, please give us a rating where you can rate us. I, I actually just stumbled on that we have, I think, 18 five star reviews on Spotify, which was, I didn't okay. notice that before I just opened that, looked um, just oh, to see how it does. Yeah, that's a really nice. Thank you for all of the, for those of you who have not. This is, a, if you listen in Spotify, go there. If you listen in Apple Podcaster, please go and do the same there. If you like us, that is. If you don't, <laughs> stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, any any words from you, Lars, on the, on the three years, except that we didn't believe that we would do this for three years, or we didn't believe the success no, we, we would have? You no, know, we went back, as we talked about in the pre-show, we went mm -hmm. back and I had to double-check the calendar to make sure it was actually three years old, because... Yeah. It, um, it really didn't feel that way. It's really uh, flown by. So, um, yeah, a lot of fun. Um, so great to connect with you guys. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to three more years. Yeah. And I'm not sure if we passed that yet, but we are getting close, in, close to passing 250,000 downloads uh, mm -hmm. or something like that, which is way more than we thought we would be ever doing. So I'm super happy for all of the, those of you who are subscribing Um you are inspiring to us and thank you for the listener questions and for your ratings and stars and thumbs up and sharing in social media. That helps us a lot and helps us spread the word that getting things done can help you in your life, get a richer mm -hmm. life, um, a life without stress and overwhelm. Who doesn't want that? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think I you were in the middle of, did we finish the intro? Did you finish that finish? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. So we're ready to jump on the questions. Yes, and uh, we have a listener question. Do you want me for, for once to try and read this? No, no. This is this is uh, you know this is my area of responsibility. So okay. in the podcast okay. area, okay. focus arises. I'm through, sorry, uh, I will I not do that. <laughs> okay, hadi <laughs> hadi, go. <laughs> the first question is from Calgary, 
in Canada. Uh, Iman saying, hi, thanks for your awesome podcast. Thank you, Iman, for listening. Um, I started GCD uh, a while. I have a robust system in the Notion app with all of the components of GCD. I capture all of my ideas with Braintoss or my notebook, but then I'll fa be faced with a long list that I couldn't clarify and organize. Doing clarification with a huge list is a heroic action. I like that phrasing. Um, so in this way, I am stuck with a long list of captures that increase every moment and makes me more anxious. Thanks if you have any suggestions, regards from Iman in Canada. Indeed, it is a heroic action. Um, so what would your take be, Lars, on this first? What's your first well, it, you idea? Know, um, so, so the question is really that long inbox, that, that uh, long list of things in there or in the physical world, that, that big pile of stuff that might be, be in your inbox. And, and you're right, it, it requires that hard thinking. That's where you need to, to wake up the captain to, to really go through and actually figure out what you're, you're going to do with, with all of these things. Um, and, and first off, you know, it's, it's very good that you are in the habit of being good at capturing. Because it can really be, at least I reckon, you know, remember for myself, and I, I see this in other GTDs as well, that they will tend to hold back because they, they recognize that there might be, be a challenge in, in having that, that long list. So great that these are being, being captured. Mm -hmm. But um, I was just listening to, I think on the way here to the office, I was listening to that, the, the GTD Live uh, part that was recently released in the in the podcast. So for those of you who haven't listened to it, please do also follow the the official GTD podcast. Um, they they just released the uh, uh, one of the old recordings of a seminar with David. A lot of good stuff in there, and he mm. just mentioned that that fact that you know those long lists. If you don't deal with them and handle them well, they'll you know generate as much stretch as they will relieve. So, mm. and I think that's exactly what what Iman is experiencing. Um, I would say the, the you know it's like that tunnel the only way out is is through mm. <laughs> um so the things that you might want to consider is you know what's holding you back what's what's the challenge with actually getting through that inbox and it can, you know it can be many different things um maybe to a good idea would be to watch out for having the time you know maybe blocking the time making sure you're doing these at the right uh, times during the day when you have the right amount of energy because you do need that energy to actually make good decisions about what has shown up in your inbox mm. so as a starting point that that might be one place to go what do you think one no i'm i'm thinking that um you know that if you are living a rich life and capturing everything that has your attention that might be um you know you live a rich life. That's a good. That's a good thing, I think. Uh, mm. And uh, but um, and th there is uh, several things we don't know here. So we have to assume and and try and and um, and be a little detectives here. I think. So if if you and Mon have um, capturing a lot of stuff, but are not setting aside enough time to do the you know to do the real clarification of them, so you don't you know. Uh, take stacks of unclear things and put it in your system, um, which I doesn't seem like you're doing because you you call that a heroic action. As I do, I do agree with you. But um, so so, but if you don't set aside enough time for clarification, that might be one. Um, and the second that I'm I was reminded of first is that maybe you are capturing things that you shouldn't capture. Like, uh, or you should capture everything that has your attention, but when you are clarifying, you should be a little harder um, clarifying. And with that, I mean um, addressing what I call your bullshit filter, or as my son would call, seriously, Dad, are you going to do that? Or seriously, Iman, I'm like, are you going to do that? And then just, just um, be a little tougher because there is always more to do than there is time in most people's lives, it is. And um, just to make sure that you capture everything, anything that has your attention that you might want to do something about, you are going to do something about that or that you have a worry on, is a very good idea. But it doesn't mean that you write it down, you need to do something with everything. Some things just seemed like a good idea at the time. And then mm. just toss it away. Because it doesn't, some things don't... Um, 
um, you know, survive the light of day uh, and clarity. David says that I have had some of my best and worst ideas, um, and and I've you know I tossed them. Um, when I when I captured them, I at least I have them. So, mm. so but to be a little adamant on tossing things, I think that's a good idea. Um, I just did that this morning. I was walking yeah. through my my inbox. I had thrown some pictures in there, there mm -hmm. from a speech that I attended with a, a Danish uh, brain scientist. I had some really really cool ideas and some stuff that I might want to use at a at a later stage. Or keep in mind, just as ways to explain to people how their their minds might be working. So, but mm -hmm. when I look through them now, I'm like mm, no, eh, eh. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Not, not no. going to do that. No. Um, and, and then perhaps another perspective to, to take on this is also to, you know, figure out if there's some reason other than the mental workload that is to empty the inbox. Mm. You know, it can really come from from uh, from any of the steps. It could be that you're, you know, allergic to that level of thinking that needs to happen to get through that inbox. It could be, so that would be step two. Step three would be that you don't have the right list. So you kind of know that you don't want to clarify it because you don't know where to organize it. You don't have mm. a good place to, to place them. It might be step four because you don't want to add to that big list of things that, you know, you already have so many projects. I don't want to go through and clarify mm. because I know I'll add, add more. Um, same could be the case for step five, that you're working from your list, but you know that list is already long. So I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> go through my inbox and add more to that mm. list. So they can really be a lot of different reasons for for why that is but yeah. hopefully we hit at least uh, one or two reasons that uh, that might help yeah and david david uses the, the, the phrase that uh, your list would either attract you or repel you mm -hmm. and so that e either you're attracted to them or you're not it's uh, you know you're, you're the opposite you're you want to um, you know do something else when they look at your lists and then yeah. then to look at them run and, yeah, run <laughs> So, so, uh, but, and I don't know how she says I, she started uh, GGD for a while, I guess, ago, and which is, um, it sounds like she's, she's fairly fresh at getting things done. So just give yourself time um, to get good at it. And one of the things that I am reminded of again and again and again, <laughs> and like for forever, I am reminded of what by my coaching clients uh, in two times today, actually, I have coaching clients who need to get better at clarifying. Mm. And this is my, my returning uh, topic all times, get really good at clarifying. P people think they are clarifying. I talked to a long t um, time GGD who's been doing GGD for I don't know, I don't, a long time, five, six, seven years, and he still had, you know, forgotten about, you know, he had a little, what they would call mom on his list for projects. Mm. It says, just uh, says a word of what it, what this is about, not the desired outcome. So, so to, to get good at clarifying, getting automating you know when we do the course we talk about you know the level one fundamentals course we talk about the the roba rosa we have this animated mm. figure there who who is uh, learning how to automate this process and it has to be repeated 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 ask yourself the questions from the clarify process what is it what does it mean to me and do i need to do something about it and if so what if you say no is it trash is it um, reference or is it something you need to incubate or if yes most likely when you capture it from your brain is something you want to do something about then what's the next action if you're going to do then go for the next physical visible action where you have everything you need that can be done in one sitting and then ask yourself does that take more than two minutes or less do it if it takes more than two minutes, then delegate it to someone if you, t you can or want, or postpone it for doing it later. Put it in your calendar if it's urgent or uh, and, uh, and important. If it's uh, not urgent but important, put it in your lists. And consider anything else that's not in those two categories not to do it at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then you will have a list that will attract you, and you will also... Uh, automate that behavior of clarify uh, clarification which is absolutely necessary for getting you know your into zero mm. and um, combine that with your seriously am i ever going to do that <laughs> is it just a stupid idea do, do, do i do i really want to commit doing that 
or do I even want to have it on my someday maybe list? I think that a maturity among GTDers are are one of the hallmarks is that you are able to say no. Mm. Say no to the things you should not do, not even put them on your someday maybes because you know that you know you activate your bullshit filter saying that hey, I can put it there, but I will never do it. <laughs> so mm. why put yeah. it there <laughs> at all? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's my two cents. All right. Hopefully, Iman, that was uh, helpful at least to to some questions to to think about to hopefully help you get across that and get through that uh, heroic action. I like that one. Mm -hmm. um, question number two is from Gabor, and um, it says, "Hi, Morten and Lars, spelled in Danish. We love that. Thank you." <sighs> First and foremost, thanks for all the effort you're putting into creating episodes. I really enjoy them. You're way above the average productivity podcast quality, actually providing useful advice. Thanks Thank so you. much for that. There's one practical question I'd like to hear your take on. So you're working off your list and finish a task that you've picked from there. You tick it off, but what do you do next? In the default case, this was the only next action in your system related to a project, um, meaning that if you purely work off your list, you're not going to move on that project before you define another next action on it. How slash when do you do this? I find myself doing one of three things. I keep working on the project, pretty much coming up with the next action on the fly, usually comes naturally. Or I record a note in my inbox that will serve as a trigger to figure out a real next action related to the given project. And the last one is I define on the spot a next action and put it in the right context list before I jump onto the next task. And I find this uh, last one difficult sometimes as it will pull me into thinking mode as opposed to execution mode, which is not always ideal. Think brain dead zombie afternoons. What's your way of managing this? Thanks a lot in advance and keep up the great work you're doing. Gabor. I think so, he nailed it. Yeah, that was a very, you know, very good, uh, good list of, of options to, to. Yeah, and it's because it is one of those three. Um, and, and one of, one thing he don't mention, I think, is that you can, and sometimes I do that if I understand what a project uh, is going to be, um, you know, what my next actions, maybe I know the two, three, four next actions, I will record them first in a note field and then just pull out the first one. So if I tick that off as finished, I can then go inside and pull out the next one. Uh, and there's a little caveat there, don't plan more than you actually think you can deliver on so that you don't try to, to um, you know, plan don't put, and don't put more than one next action on one context list. This is very important. Um, but you can have it in the notes field and go there. That's the only addition, I, I think. Mm, yeah. No, like you said, it's a you know it's a great list of possibilities. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. guessing it's, it's a, a very um, seasoned GTD, or I think we'd we'd call it. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the one I would focus on is is the last one as well. So to define uh, on the spot the next action and put it on the right context list before I jump into yeah. uh, another next action, um, where he says it could be difficult because that will hit, put him back into thinking mode, which is, mm. you know, um, is a very good reflection. I will say from my perspective, you know, if, if we take the analogy of a project being a book, the next action being the bookmark as to where you came to, you will often pick up a uh, next action, you will do a series of next actions and you'll get to a spot where you're not able to to move forward. So like he says, we want to be sure to to capture that somewhere so we have that next action we can mm -hmm. move forward on. So for example, in the case, um, I, I sent some some emails this morning, um, some of them ended up on my, my waiting for list and that was, that didn't really require any real thinking mode. I was sort of mm. in that track. I was from working on that task. That was everything that was present in my mind. So it wasn't really triggering my thinking mode to be able to capture that that waiting for. But I can certainly relate to sometimes where you're maybe in a bigger project and you need to, okay, so now we've kind of completed this mini project within the, the project. So what would be now my, my next action? So mm. perhaps in those cases, it might be helpful to you know, sit down, make a note, throw it in the inbox, or whatever mm. the case might might be. If you need to mm. to pop it for that, that yeah. uh, that smart version of yourself. So. 
Yeah, no, I, I do believe that he's, um, you know, to um, to do number two when you're tired. That is, note that you've stopped there, and I, you know, I need to create a new action, next mm. action, and toss it in your inbox. Uh, might be a good trigger. So and uh, and but it, it also can help that you are if you're not doing this already, maybe um, a weekly project sweep might cap capture that so if you have a way to to um depending on how your you know what you, what what's the features of your gtd list system is so that you can see all the projects and just swipe through them and see if there's a next action there if you have that possibility to see them together um that might be um helpful and uh, as as an alternative to to writing it down but it is more fail safe to write it down because some days are more you know hectic than others and yeah. uh, if you are not having the time to do the project sweep then you might not you know um, capture that and i do I do totally agree with gabur here's this that he says it's, it is when you're in execution mode it's very difficult to go back to reflection and thinking mode um because it's a whole different you know ball game and i use the analogy um you know that we have the um, and i think i mentioned this last week as well the what you call that when you are on, on running the tracks where you are jumping hedges hedge run hurdles hurdles a friendly listener on youtube was kind enough to help us <laughs> ah, it's called hurdles thank you <laughs> friendly listener um so the hurdles uh, the hurdle race is a lot more difficult than the running down the you know the the runway of of something you know, you know runway on the um, doesn't have a bend it just go continuous continuous and that's execution mode when you are doing executing on your you know, on your next actions that is a different gear than stop and start thinking the the hurdle race is where you run and you meet uh, something that's not finished you need to think about it and you have to reflect about it and you have to stop and that's sometimes very difficult so gabor i think that you are um a seasoned gtd or at least you, you you talk like one so you can pat yourself on the back you do a lot of the right conclusions as i would say so um, absolutely and, and for and those really that I, I i like to you know underline that 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 difference in thinking because i mm -hmm. it seems to me at least a lot of people that i talk to that don't know gtd don't really recognize the complexity of the brain and just all that i'm always me i'm always thinking what's the difference here so i think it's mm -hmm. it's very nice that he highlights that difference yeah. um and just also like you said the weekly review will help you catch these things but Mm. You know, ideally, we don't want to hang on to that as, as necessarily a, 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 you know, wait until you get to that. Uh, mm. So great if you could could capture them, them as you go along, but that would then be the, the safety mm. net. And I just want to shout out John Kibler was the kind and friendly man who told us that hurdles are what track athletes jump over. Thank you, John. Thank for you, setting John. us straight. straight. Yes. We are the Nordic chipmunks and uh, we do not always have the words. <laughs> <laughs> but we understand GDD fairly well, I would say so. Um, so, but and, and this also, what Gabur's um, insights are also reflecting on on Iman's uh, insights is that because she's at different stage, I think, than Gabor in her maturity towards getting things done. And um, and it's not you know we are all in a journey and getting better at getting things done. Me too. You too. We all are. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to be really good at this when I die, at some, <laughs> some, sometime in the future, hopefully a long time from now, but I'm going to get really good at it. And to be a little better every day and get some more insights, is, it's, uh, it's important. And, and the, the, if you're not good at clarification, if you're not taking time to clarify and organize good next actions and good desired outcomes, your execution mode is going to be so much harder. And I had my first uh, coaching, um, virtual coaching today was from a client that's in, you know, he's climbing uphill. Um, he, is, he has too much to do, he's stressed, he can't focus, it's difficult for him, he's in meeting all the time, he has you know, uh, a structure at work that demands his being in the meetings, and he don't have time for clarify, he don't have mm. time for thinking at all, which means that I'm, I'm trying to set him straight and asking him questions like, 
Okay, so how do you know you're doing a good job? I don't know. <laughs> that is, okay, so how could you know? And I think that, you know, setting aside time for reflection, be harder at saying no for some people are necessary. But for most people that are in that situation, just to get good at clarifying and, and you know, repeating what's uh, what do I want to achieve? What is this? What does it mean to me? Do I, am I going to do something about it? Yes or no? And so so um, yeah, just get good at that. Automate that. So mm. that's my fi yeah. final words on those two. So <laughs> we have one more, don't we? Great. We have one last question. The last question was from Alex, and um, I like that name. That's my youngest son's name as well. Mm -hmm. um, he says, "Hi guys, really like your show. Keep it going." Thanks, Alex. We will for another three years, um, at least. Um, he says, um, <laughs> I noticed that I struggle with uh, starting slash finishing specific types of project. The most recent one is renovate the bath. It doesn't fit the usual do when you're in the right context approach. The thing is, when I write down the goal, the joints in the bath are replaced. And the first step, remove the old joints. I end up with a non-functioning shower. Then I would need to go and buy a new joint mass. He says, I hope that's either correct word or at least understandable. Um, he puts that on his shopping list and then buy the stuff when I'm at the DIY market. That could take a couple of days. After that, I would put do the new joints in my home context and do that when I have the capacity. All in all, I think there are some projects which need to be thought out and planned through from the beginning to the end. This project will probably be done on one weekend when I have bought, bought the joint mess and when I know that there are no other plans for the specific weekend. What hmm. do you guys think about this? Thanks for your reply and for the upcoming show or both. Hmm. All the best from Alex. Thank you, Alex, for your question. And and he is he's right. Some some projects need to be thought through. Um, you don't need to have all the details, but you need to you know, D D David would say, you need to think enough to get it off your mind. Hmm. And and to, to understand when it's off your mind, you have to fine tune your brain to understand, is it still in there? Is it, <laughs> is it revisiting you? Or are you regurgitating like a cow? Are you a cow regurgitating <laughs> things no that's not yeah yeah well regurgitating things that's not finished and if it come come back and come back maybe you're not thought it true enough you have not clarified it enough so you know exactly you know my my one of my favorite analogies is um, your winter tires i don't know if you remember that, that one but that was um one of my um uh, seminar participants who says I have winter tires on my my you know we do an um, empty your head exercise a mind sweep and uh, he had winter tires and I asked him what is this well I have to change them to summer tires and then we uh, uh, and then do you have everything you need to do that and he said no uh, and then he started thinking you know hmm I understand he, he has not thought this true properly and he ended up no i need um, maybe i need new tires i th this is what i i have a you know a nagging um, thinking about mm. that maybe i need to 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 change the tires okay how will i see you find that out uh well i need uh, i need to measure the depth of the of the um, you know the um, what you call it the the f now we have first, to again. <laughs> first, John, can you please come? Yeah, <laughs> we need we need an instant translation here. No, but inside, you know, in the car tires, in the in the rubber, there are some, um, and I'm I'm sure I know this word if I start thinking. But the furrows, the the depth of the tires needs to be hmm. a certain amounts of uh, centimeters or millimeters or inches, if you may. Um, and he didn't know, uh, you know, he didn't know if it, the, 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 he would um, pass the test from, from, you know, the road um, authorities if, if he put them on. Mm. And he had to figure that out. And he said, well, I need to measure that. And I asked you, how do you do that? Well, I need a, uh, you know, the, the tire depth measure thingy. And I said, okay, do you have that? And, no, I don't have. So where do you, will you, how can I see you find that? And he said, no, I have to go and buy that. And how, where would you buy that? and started thinking now I will go to uh, my DIY shop or Klaus Olsson as mm -hmm. we call them here in Norway many of them are 
uh, specific um, uh, chain of um, that kind of hardware stores. And I said, uh, okay. And then I asked him, do you have everything uh, you need to do that, uh, to figure that out? And yes. And he got the, the um, that on his, he didn't even put it on the list because it takes two, less than two minutes to figure that out. He can go on to his um, browser on his phone and do a search in uh, klausulsson.no and found that he had, they actually had this th thingamajig and then mm. put it on a uh, shopping list that he will shop when he uh, left that the seminar. And, and to see the relief on his mind when he actually understood he thought that true to the next action. And I think that's what Alex is alluding to, because if you take your time to think something true, you will understand that, well, I can't do this before I have done that, and I don't have this, so I have to buy this before. And, and to take the time to... Um, understand enough so you can plan enough to get it off your uh, off your mind and into your system and your system is way better than you are to understand when something is not planned right that's mm. why it will pop up in your brain again because it will say ah you haven't thought this true now alex uh, i'm coming visiting you again um, or lars for that matter if you don't or morton also because i sometimes i don't do this 100 percent myself you know we are infallible we're not not infallible. We are fallible. <laughs> Again, I'm sure we're going to have somebody <laughs> correcting me <laughs> if I continue using that. We are not infallible. We do mistakes. Um, and uh, but to be able to to um, you know um, do a good job at this as best as we can at our ability at the time makes it a lot easier uh, to think think the process through. And and David would say that you need to slow down. To speed up which meaning that mm. you need to slow down your thinking so that you can plan good so when you are doing you have no friction you just do engage Whew. so yeah. any additions or thoughts <laughs> yeah i think um i think the you know the function the the what what happens in your mind is exactly the same i think in in alex's case i think he he does have the right next action but there is just some planning that is needed to make mm. this a successful project and, and make it, you know, something that works. I mean, it could be replacing the, the uh, something in the bathroom. It could be replacing the toilet, obviously. You're not going to just, you know, the next action, well, I'm going to go go over there and, 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 you know, loosen the bolts and just remove it. Obviously, you need to <laughs> probably have... Your family is going to be angry. <laughs> replace a new one, right? So that's kind First of... First toilet, Dad! <laughs> Yeah, there's just a hole in, in the ground. Um, no, so mm. obviously some, some projects do require some thinking. Mm. Um, I think when I talk to, to people about it, you know, it, it really depends. So let's say, you know, let's say you had a X number of projects going on. Many of them will be fine with the, the, uh, the, the well-defined desired outcome and the, the next action to move forward on that. Um, but some of them, a certain percentage of them will require more than that. Some will have mm. some more material, some will have, you know, the, the need for a natural planning model exercise to really think it through. Perhaps that could be an option in, in this case. Mm. Um, or just, you know, maybe outline the project, uh, kind of like what you were, were responding to with uh, the former question of just having that outline, get an idea of what are the steps actually in this. Um, mm. So I think what when Alex said at the end is, you know, this will probably be done in one weekend when I have what I need to do it. And I know that there are no other plans that will, will get me away from that. So, yeah. so that kind of thinking will be necessary for some projects. And yeah, one way to discover it is just like you said, there'll be, you'll notice that something is, is off in, in this case, and then that requires some, some different kind of planning. So how are mm. you going to do that? Are you going to block off time in your calendar to make sure that you can, can then do that? Mm. Um, and I can actually directly relate to that. I had a, an agenda item for my, uh, my wife. We have a, a window that we bought that we need to replace in the summer house. And it's sitting there in the garage waiting for us to, to go over there and actually uh, change it ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but when do we do that? Well, we actually, we do need the time. We need to make sure that the weather is, is fine so it doesn't start raining in the middle, things like that. So some some projects do require that kind of thinking. And that actually mm -hmm. is related to, well, we also need to, to paint that, that part of, or the, that wall on the house. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a project that will then kick into gear once mm -hmm. that other one is completed. So, you know, mm -hmm. some projects will, will, you know, you can do your outline in whatever way you want. Could be bullets, could be a Gantt chart, could be however works works well for you. But mm. but yeah, some projects do require you to think a bit more, plan a bit, bit more. Yeah. 
Well, one of the things that I've found very beneficial that you might want to consider, Alex, is that um, when I am faced with one of these kind of projects that it kind of like, you understand you've not planned it well enough. You haven't flushed it out enough. So it comes back to you. I'm just, mm. I'm just, you know, I'm over that hump for one of my major projects. Uh, and what, what helped me a lot is that I made a, a mind map just to um because when you see when you have a lot of moving parts and you can't see them in relation to each other then you then it makes um and in in one project it helps to flush them out in a mind map uh, i do it digitally i have a mind map tool that i use and uh, just to see how and then you can flush it out and you can make uh, connections between the different parts what need to come here it kind of uh, helps you look at the project clearer uh, than before and 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 mm. if you add on top of that uh, the natural planning model we have an episode on that i'm sure lars will be very uh, nice and linked to that episode in the show notes if you would like to to um to go back to the natural planning model because that also helps you plan your projects um what's the purpose why do we need to do this What's the standards? What's the framework? And what's the vision? How does it look when it's you know while success kicks in? Um, what you need, what what could be relevant here? And uh, what's the plan? What's the project or sub projects? Um, and what's the next actions? So you move things forward. And I I remember when I before I started on this, I had this feeling inside, something is not sitting right. Uh, my wife, uh, we have an expression uh, between us that, that could be what uh, David would call cognitive cognition, cognitions. If you have something that doesn't sit, let me see if I can show my hands for those on, on video, it doesn't sit exactly. You need to be on top of each other and it has, you, you have to, it had to sit. This is, our, <laughs> this is our cognitive cognition sign to mm -hmm. each other. Something is not, something is off here with what we are talking or we, we are not in alignment or I am not in alignment with my thinking. Um, how do I get there? How do I get out of the rut and into, you know, uh, planning and uh, getting things off my mind so I can get more present in the moment and doing mm. more the right stuff without things bugging me. So if it's not on your uh, off your mind, uh, it's on your mind, it's in the wrong place. So plan enough to get it off your mind, mm. but not yeah. more, not, not overdo it. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, that's part of the, the, I think, the art as well, that, you know, recognizing that some projects do require this extra bit of planning mm. instead of, you know, you don't have to take this approach for, you know, make a full cat chart of changing the, you know, to summer tires. Mm. <laughs> no. But just thinking it through as, yeah. as, as much as you need for, for the different projects. That's Slow the, down. Keys. Yeah, exactly. And, you yeah. know, just in actually on my list right now, I have a, a next action to review a Gantt charting tool because I just find that I have some projects right now that are sort of dependent and it kind of feels like yeah something's wrong I, d I need to do something about it's them off. I need a, a yeah. better offer overview a different overview I need to reflect and, and, and talk through some things or talk to myself about some things mm. um, and I think a Gantt, uh, Gantt, Gantt chart might actually be helpful in that case so mm. so yeah investigate whatever might might work for you again no need to go high tech you can go low tech whatever whatever works for you mm. um Good. I don't have anything else to add on this. Do you reckon we are done for today? I think we, I think we made it. Um, thanks again to, to Alex, to Gabor, to Iman for the questions. I really appreciate it. Thank um, you. It's, it's a lot of fun to get these questions. I really, really like it. I think we get some, some fun episodes, I think, at least based on the feedback that I'm getting, that, that these are sort of um, mm. valuable perspectives and examples of how people mm. use GTD uh, differently and then what, what they might want to consider. So keep those uh, questions uh, questions coming. Podcast yeah. at gtdnordic.pk. It is in the show notes. Yes, and I know that we get a lot of... Um uh, listeners coming through from Reddit. So if you're on Reddit, a uh, little post there with a little uh, something, something about the podcast would be uh, beneficial for us. I'm just begging now. <laughs> Give us a present. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, to be honest, uh, um, Reddit has been be one of the most uh, important sources for, for listeners, I think. So if you're a Redditor, 
uh, feel free to post about us in uh, the GTD forum there. So some mm. red hits. Okay, um, Lars, will you take us out? I will, and I will do that as always by reminding you to head on over to gtdnordic.com to have a look around. Find the country websites for each of the Nordic countries because on each of those sites, you will find articles about GTD, links to new set of newsletters, um, all of the different content that we do on, on social media groups where people discuss GTD. And you'll find, of course, all of the different offerings that we have regarding speeches, coaching, and seminars, both the physical and the virtual ones. If you're outside the Nordics, head on over to gettingthingsdone.com to find your local partners. Lastly, as always, we really hope that you find these episodes valuable. So thumbs up to those of you who send in your questions. We hope that the answers helped you in your uh, quest for, for getting more in control, getting a, a clearer mind. And as always, mm -hmm. like Morten said earlier, rating on Spotify or Apple podcast really helps us. So it uh, helps the discoverability of the podcast. Let more people know about GCD and, and learn GCD, which is why we are here. So and subscribe and hit that notification bell, I hear them say on YouTube. So please do that. <laughs> if you want to be notified on new episodes uh, that we release on YouTube, that's uh, always a good idea. Depending on um, which channel you are in, you will get a notification. So, And we do release them in parallel, Lars and I, so this, you can choose which one you, you like the best which is probably exactly the same thing, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much for listening and uh, uh, watching if you're on YouTube. Until next time, stay safe and stay productive. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.